hard to keep up with all of the different streaming platforms and where the good horror movies are. So today, I'm going to tell you about six, six underrated horror films streaming on AMC Plus right now as of August 19th in the United States. All right, kicking off our list is a 2012 film called The Pact. And this is about a, si a girl whose sister goes missing and then she goes back to like their childhood home and starts trying to figure out this mystery about what happened to her. This is a super cool film that I saw in 2012. Told my friend about it, he checked it out, he loved it and it's another, it's one of those that's just stuck in my mind for a long time and there are a lot of those on this list. You're gonna see me say that a lot here. But this is a really well shot, low budget horror film with a really cool setting in this creepy house and a cool little mystery also going on here. It does start a little slow and you're gonna have to ignore a little bit of pieces here and there. I think the acting is a little weak. It's a little awkward at first, but give it a chance, get into it. And there's some really, really creepy cinematography, really, really creepy scenes in here. And like I said, cool, just shots of the house. Now there's also a nice little mystery also going on here. Like I said, this does have a sequel called The Pact 2 and I have never seen that so I cannot speak for its quality, but check out The Pact if you've never seen it. All right, coming in number five is a 2018 film called The Clove Hitch Killer. This is also streaming on Netflix, just so you know, if you want to check it out and you have Netflix but not AMC+. Plus. Now this is based off a true life story and I'm not going to say which one, you can check it out. You can Google it if you want to, but I like to try to keep some stuff, you know, keep as much as mystery as possible because I think going in blind is good. Although I will say this is ba this is about a boy who is trying to follow the trails of this serial killer in his small town and sort of uh, unsolve this mystery that's going on. He, uh, similar to Summer of 84, but instead of a group of teenagers, you get this one teenage boy who's kind of like an outcast and he's trying to figure out some stuff when he stumbles upon some clues. And so, like I said, based off a of true life serial killer, I guess I'm not gonna say which one, but I highly recommend checking this one out. This has a great performance by the dad here, which, what is his name? Oh my gosh, it is Dylan McDormand. Dylan McDormand is, plays the father of the boy here. Great performance from him. And just this is a really cool twist on, like I said, it's based on the true story, but it's definitely taking some initiative and changing things. It's not like it's 100% factual. It's not like it's bio biography or, or documentary or whatever. Uh, it's definitely taking liberties here, but I highly recommend checking out The Clove Hitch Killer if you've never seen it. All right, number four on this list is Werewolves Within from 2021. And this is based off a video game to which I have never played. I don't know anything about the source material, but don't go in expecting it to feel like a video game. It definitely doesn't. This is a horror comedy, and this movie is about a group of like a small town that are being attacked by werewolves, but don't go in thinking that this is going to be some like bloodbath of like a bunch of werewolves attacking this small town. This is not 30 Days of Night. This is more of like a horror comedy with some quirky characters that get trapped in this hotel, or I guess they isolate themselves in this hotel in the snow, trying to figure out this mystery about who might be this werewolf. And so there's a whole lot of like this, you're the person going on, and there's this out of towner that comes in and there's a whole lot of pointing fingers and trying to piece together the clues as well as there's some people that go missing and get killed here and there. And so there's a lot of, like I said, quirky humor, quirky characters, and a nice little mystery going on. Plus you have the added benefit of isolation in the snow. Also a great performance by the lead here, and I can't remember his name, but Sam Richardson. Richardson. He's great in this. I think he's hilarious, but Remember, as I said, it's like subtle humor. It's not over the top. So don't go in expecting a bloodbath or outrageous laughs. It's a very dry comedy, but a nice little mystery going on here. And this is just a fun little movie. So I highly recommend checking out Werewolves Within if you have not seen it. Number three on this list is a 2013 film that similar to a lot of these on this list, I saw years ago as one of those cool concepts that just stuck with me for a long time. The film I'm talking about is called Contracted. Now, this is a movie about a girl who goes to a party and gets drugged and 
and gets what she believes to be an STD. Now, that's all I'm gonna say about it, but you know, there could be a trigger warning for some people. Just know that going in, that is what this film is about. And it is a, definitely more of a serious tone, but it's a very, it takes a overdone concept and puts a nice little twist on it that I really appreciated. This also does a sequel, which I haven't seen, but if you happen to check it out, let me know if it's any good. It's called Contracted Phase 2, I believe. But this has some cool gross out moments, some cool practical effects. As I mentioned, this is a low budget horror film, so know that going in. This is not gonna be like a big budget, blow your mind horror, but it's a really cool concept, good performances, and some cool gross out pieces here and there. All right, coming in at number two is another movie that I saw in 2009, and I showed my friend. We both loved it, we watched it repeatedly, and I don't know anyone who ever talks about this movie. The film I'm talking about is called Doghouse. Now this is a British horror comedy. It's a very specific style type of movie. Now, if you like that style, I think this will be right up your alley. But once you watch it, you kind of understand what type of movie this is. I am going to say that IMDb synopsis, or at least the, the plot of this film going in, just so you know what you're in for. This is about a group of men who are celebrating one of their friends getting divorced and they go to this small little village and they encounter a bunch of women who are infected with a virus that makes that make them man-eating cannibals. So just know that going in, this is not the type of movie that maybe would be completely socially acceptable today. Just so you understand going in, it is about a bunch of women who are infected with a man-eating virus, okay? And so it's based, definitely shown through this perspective of these men who are celebrating the divorce and they're trapped in this town with a bunch of women who want to kill them. So if that idea sounds funny to you, I would highly recommend checking this one out. Just know what you're in for. Like I said, British humor and it's a horror comedy. There's some cool practical effects here. And to me, the idea of that I love that concept of like celebrating your divorce and getting trapped in this town with a bunch of women who want to kill you. To me, that concept is just hilarious. So I was on board right away. But like I said, if you've never heard of Doghouse and that idea sounds funny to you and you maybe like that style of humor, definitely go check out Doghouse. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but number one on my list is another movie I saw, 2008 film, and I remember so vividly I was at my friend's house. I checked this out on his computer, put my headphones on, had no expectation, and this film just blew my mind. The film I'm talking about is called Pontypool, and this is an interesting title. I know it takes place in a small town, I believe in Canada, called Pontypool. I don't know if that's a real town or not. Canadian, Canadians, <laughs> let me know if it's a real town. I'm not sure, but... Every once in a while, you just stumble upon one of those movies and it just like sticks with you forever. And this is one of those movies. This is a zombie outbreak type film, but it is told through the perspective of this like crew that are hosting this sort of like radio talk show. And there's this radio DJ or this radio show, I guess it's not a talk show necessarily, but this radio DJ who is kind of narrating the events of what is happening in this small town in the snow. And they're getting these little pieces of news articles coming in and they're not exactly sure what's real, what's fake, and like if it's a hoax. And so that's all I'm really gonna say about the plot, but there's this one really unique idea that sort of explains the zombie outbreak. I've never seen anything like this before. It is such a cool concept to me, and I think it's one of those that, hey, if you go check out this film, and you're like, that just didn't work for me, it, it might not. It might not work for you. But if it does, I feel like it's so cool. It might be something that you will just never forget when you think of zombie films again, in my opinion anyway. Now, I did watch this again recently, and unfortunately, it doesn't hold up quite as well as it did when I first watched it, but I still think that you, while you might have to ignore just a little bit of pieces here and there, it takes a little bit to get started and it's low budget. You might have to ignore just a, a little bit of the pieces here and there, but there's this concept, like I said in here, I think is just so cool. I have never seen anything like it and I highly recommend you checking out Pontypool. 
If nothing else for this really eerie tone and vibe and the storytelling, like I said, it's just such a unique way to tell this zombie apocalypse that I've never seen before. And the way that the outbreak happens is unlike anything in any other movie. Super high, high recommend Ponty Pool. If it sounds like it's up your alley, go check it out right now, streaming on AMC+. Plus. That is my list, and there are a couple films on this list that I've been wanting to talk about for a long, long time, and I'm so happy when I'm scrolling through. I just, you know, I want to be able to give people some recommendations of things that I really, really enjoyed and have impacted me in my film going experiences for years, not just like once, but have stuck with me for a really long time. And sometimes, you know, like if you do a review of an older film, not everyone checks it out, but sometimes people check out these lists and they're looking for things that you might pass over. So check out some of the movies on this list. And if you have, let me know what you thought of them down below. But if you haven't, let me know which ones you're going to check out and come back after you watch them and let me know what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching and take care. I don't care. want it scared, I'm a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog, everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through, you can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking with it.